Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome to another Elder Scrolls Legends deck guide. Today I present to you a deck that was brought to me by one of my viewers called Trunks. So um, shout out to him. That is a mid-range Redoran deck. So not a Redoran that is using a lot of the uh, rally effects, though the new ones that will just buff the cards in your hand. But it is a heavy, heavy mid-range deck. So you're kind of combining mid-range Crusader with a mid-range warrior and together with all the mid-range power that you have you have a very powerful deck so there is not much new stuff in this deck if you just look at the deck list uh, it's kind of like really just a super mid-range heavy deck with all the good stuff that you can find and because of that and because of the greedy meta that we currently have so all the control decks that are out all the decks that are trying to do some crazy over the top combos this deck has a very good win rate it brought me to legend now with uh, like a eight win streak or something like that now uh, pretty pretty good so i can definitely recommend this here and the kind of the only new cards are the the velocity assassin which is a great card it's, it's a rally card but just because it is so wonderful with lethal and rally you will play that pretty good in uh, mid-range of course then uh, we need we need a tribunal card not a tribunal card a three color card so the redone forerunner is the only three color card that we have in this deck charged rain ward pretty okay you can also buff that with some with some weapons if you need uh, life gain that will that will work for sure and it's overall a very solid card indeed and that might be already it from the new card so there's one more there's one more which is the sharp eyed let go sharp eyed ashken which is the dark elf six magicka six attack six defense plot discard your hand then draw three cards so plot means that you need to play a card before and then you could play the sharp eyed ashken and you are drawing the three cards so normally when you want to play this is when you have uh, kind of like just one other card in the hand. You play the other card, you play the Ashcan, and boom, you have three cards. As another drawing card, you have the Jarl. Um, so you can decide what you want to play. You can, if you do not have the Ashcan, which is a legendary, just play three Jarls. You could also decide to go two Ashcans and one Jarl, whatever you prefer. So I've tried it out a bit. Uh, one Ashcan was cool and two Jarls if you want to play something else then just change the cards a bit. It is still working, I can assure you. Uh, so rest, kind of like all old cards, still working wonderful, a lot of mid-range power. And uh, the only the only hint for you is that the Wodok Headhunter here, for that you of course need an orc to get charged, very powerful card. We do not have that many orcs, so be careful when you have the Wodok Headhunter in hand. Maybe you want to wait a bit longer until you also get an orc in hand and then play that in combination. We have a few orcs, but I think in total that is like 12 or 13 in the deck. So like a Dragontail Saver here, Orc Clan Captain. Then we have also Morgul Gatekeeper, the Archer, the Garnak, and of course the Water Canter does itself. So that should be around 12 orcs or so, maybe 13. I'm, I'm not sure right now, but uh, relatively low in comparison to the deck size. So you need to be a bit careful there. The Headhunter is still powerful. In, in this case so with 75 cards you're not hitting it all the time but when you hit it's coming pretty much pretty good and handy uh, so overall you try to win the game between turn uh, six seven eight nine around that working most of the time um, because the meta is so greedy so try it out guys i will now show you three games or kind of like two games because you will see the second game was very very short so um, enjoy the gameplay if you have questions about this deck about legends in general or whatsoever use the comment section please and with that off to some gameplay all right let's go let this party starting um, we are facing a tavani for the first game Going first, so what you want here is replacing everything. You want at least one two drop. Uh, Young man with or hunting spirit would be great on turn three, but without a two drop, you are replacing everything. You need that two drop. There is one, but there's also a little gap here. On the other hand, with the steel, we might play it on turn three. So drop in the circle on two and then use the steel on turn three. Going for the world wall on his first turn. Hmm. I can already see where we are going with that. Wind keep, wind keep, wind keep. Okay, and then we are starting right with a wind keep and play circle and the steel on the next turn. But yeah, if he's going with the world wall into a dream mentality, that's very painful for us later. He's already playing it. He's not waiting until level three, or he might have level three already in the hand. You never know. Channel played on the world wall. Interesting decision because the world wall alone is not very strong. So that's kind of like a, a zero seven there, doing nothing. Circle, uh, still buffing that with the 
deal because we can right now. He could then use a lightning bolt if he has that in hand, which is um, kind of okay. I just want to apply the steel already oh, to have so the, the maximum magic applied. Galeen, 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 what are you picking? What are you picking with the Galeen? Something mean, I think. So, the horn the face, a black dragon the also spawning here. Black dragon immune to lethal, which is very, very useful if you face, for example, the archer deck with a lot of lethal effects. And of course, the, the snow effects are also not too bad. Mummify on the black dragon, though. And another enchanted blight. He really loved those. Mm. So that gives us the opportunity to trade into that. This is getting buffed, so we would then have a, a 6-2 if we just go for the phase. On the other hand, the Galene is still killing that next turn. Uh, so we kind of have nothing against it. So I would say we will trade into the Galene. Kill it. Then we go on the phase, so we're just dealing 4. And after that we're going for a blood dragon here. It's very likely that the 6-2 is dying, but it is still better to kill the Galeen and dealing a bit less damage in the face. Because if there's no fireball or something, then yeah, it's pretty good. Ooh man, a Dune Smuggler, that's an on 1-8. Uh, so we might want to use the Earthbone Spinner. Oh, look at him. Someone is running a lot of, lot of items. We use the Earthbone Spinner on the World War. For sure. I mean, we, we hit just him in the face. There's no problem, the Black Dragon can hit him in the face, but a 4-5? No way. No way I'm leaving you with that. The so that's out. Also, we will kill the Dune Smuggler here with the Redor and Forerunner. So let's go in the face, do that first, then we use the Forerunner so that he's not getting the plus one effect when he's um, shifting in the lanes. So that could be important if he's running a lot of these shifting effects down to 17 my hand right now is not Steel too strong but at least we have enough to play on the next turn cross negation okay fine so we can just go off on spinner deny the effect that's probably the best because because he could shift again if he's if he just run with the forerunner into that he might shift and then kill the earthbound spinner for example so we are totally using the earthbound spin on this um then let's go with the phase here Doing for the one, doing for the five, the going for the mine. reason he's already down to eight. Then we have the Earthbound Spinner here that is now hitting and crushing the, the Phyla kinda. And the Honig Spirit, so very, very strong right lane. If we now expect an Ice Storm, he would crush everything besides the Blood Dragon if he's not also using a Fireball. That would be the most painful thing that he could do because then we are losing everything and not even the Haunting Spirit effect is triggering. So that would be very painful. I think that was indeed a shift card. So he would have got his effect and he would have got something out of the graveyard. Suppress silencing. So then you still have the ice storm. Also then you don't need to silence. So there's no ice storm. No, no, no. There was no need to silence if he had the ice storm in hand. So we're still good. Aerostalker, we still have eight. Still winning. Yeah, that's not doing anything. So he's looking forward to get another guard here. Otherwise, he is probably losing. There we go. That's what we like. So let's trade here. Go for the one. We go for the five. And we go hopefully for the three as well. There we go. There we go. First game. First win. Easy, boys. We're still at 33 life. In our second game, we might have a mirror match. But more likely, our opponent is using some sort of rally mechanic. So also facing House Bedoran, the same that we are using. Have an um, okay start, I think. We have a decent curve here. We can use the Crusade Assault on the Circle Initiate, get some extra cards and then drop the Blade Master on turn three. That's kind of powerful, so we're just keeping the hand. Whenever I'm having the curve at hand and then I'm replacing a few cards, I'm getting a lot of bad cards back into the hand. So I will just keep the hand. That's totally a fine one. Uh, also, Gatekeeper might help us. Um, it's just that we are losing quite a lot of the Prophecy cards already, so would like to have those later out of a rune, but it's still fine. If we are the ones that are pushing, then there is no need for those Prophecies. Now there's also an Assassin incoming, and with that Assassin, I prefer that over the Gatekeeper, to be honest. Gives us a lethal creature on the board, so a bit less damage that we are pushing this turn, but with the Rally effect, we can then push maybe more in the future and if we go next turn on the blade mass and that is a 4-6 for example that's pretty powerful and if he's interested in dropping a guard here we could just go for the for the lethal rally effect and kill the guard without a problem and he's starting super super slow wow if you're starting that slow 
That is potentially a this problem. Oh, is he already conceding? Uh, probably. Uh, I like to go into the Blade Master here. So room. we are not. Oh, he's even getting the buff. Protect Perfect. The We're not taking the four here. We're just going for the Blade Master. And the game might be over in an instant. Yeah, that's a problem if you play three colors and you are just picking up the high cost cards into your hand. He's way too slow right now. Will be hard for him to come back into this game. And now for a practical And there's a rally unit which can only kill the small rally unit on our side. So we're still pushing so much damage here. That is amazing. Uh, I like to go gatekeeper. Probably will attack with the blade master first, and then we are buffing the other unit. So if he's running like a Pearson Javelin, he might still want to kill this. And if not, well, we are fine. So that's six in the face. Then we drop the gatekeeper here, buff the circle. That's another six in your face, sir. And there's already concede fast and furious. That was fun. So we're going for a third game for sure. The second game was definitely over way too fast. So let's try a third one. And my opponent is using here the good old Tribunal deck. So a very control heavy deck normally. Again, we're replacing everything. Not a good starting hand. Um, Dragon Tail, so um, okay. I mean, turn two, maybe turn three, trade then, or get some cards in the hand would be good. But I mean, if he's playing really the control version, there is normally no chance that we will use a Crusader's Assault. Could be that he's giving us a Barrow Stalker. Uh, not very likely. More likely is that he's just killing that with um, something like an executor. So, eight trick. That is um, okay. so. It might just be a black falls deck. Probably it is. Mm, I'm going for the east march with that here for the tempo play. Have another unit on the board. Kind of want to deal a lot of damage. Plus, this is a better target for him to kill, and then uh, we might have still the orc for the wood or cat hunter to have the charge. Yeah, that's exactly what is happening here. If we are not getting another unit, we would have played the Crusader Salt, but luckily there is a Dragon Tail, which is not that strong on its alone, and it would have been better to get something bigger on turn 4. But nonetheless, it's another Orc, so we have a decent chance that... Oh, okay, we have no chance. Mm. We would have normally a decent chance that one Orc is surviving with the Reverating Strike. A card that I have revealed, if you remember, if you remember, that's a very good card. I've revealed that, and that is just killing both Dragon Tails. Oh, Merchant's Camel. Interesting. He's dropping a Warcraft and dropping a Barrow Stalker. Was kinda picking a card relatively quickly, which could be a sign that that is a cast in the time, for example. If there is a cast in the time, we would easily pick that. What I like to do now is go Crusader's Assault. Hit that, get more cards into the hand, and we also play the Hunting Spirit, most likely. Uh, so let, let's do that. So dealing a bit less damage, but we get more cards, which might be important. And there is something triggering. Lightning Bolt would kill it. Oh, if he's going Harpy here, that could mean, it's probably meaning that he's not interested in a cast in the time. There is no cast in the time in your hand. Then you could use a fireball here. I don't like that. So let's go for the forerunner and kill the harpy and pass. Oh boy, just an elusive. That's not enough. I smell the stench of the living. Arrow stalker could be enough, but you know we have the giant here. Uh, the point is only that next turn he could play at dawn. So. I'm really not sure if we want to go into that, so maybe it's just better to go into the steel, crush this, and then... Hmm, if we go East March Crusader, if he has an Ice Storm, he would still crush everything, because that is still on the board. Decisions, decisions. I'm still doing it. I'm drawing a card here. We'll hold, no matter what. Earthbone Spinner. That might also be fine. We could get rid of the effect, but nope, nope, nope. So let's go for the weapon. Hit that. And I'm um, probably still giving you the haunting. An ice storm is just too good right now. But if he's not having the ice storm, we get a lot of tempo for that. So he's running he's running a 75 card deck. Chance for an ice storm is not too high. Let's go for it. If he has an ice storm, so GG, well played. But if there is no Ice Storm, it's definitely better to have the Haunting Spirit on the board. So it's kind of like a coin flip right now. If he has it, well, it's 
pretty good for him and that is bringing him back into the game if he has no ice storm and he's just playing a dawns here for example or he was interested in playing a dawns then it's totally in my favor and that is that is it's not the ice storm hooray that should help me a lot so it's obviously killing my, my drain unit but we still have two units here just another elusive coming a card that is cool gives another card to draw but also is kind of like very slow so we go for the face here Don't make me laugh. and he's getting something he's getting something what do you have for me it's a lightning ball this so we have a seven five here which can easily be killed no problem um i'm thinking about going either earthbound spinner hit that and probably the yeah that's probably the one i like more than going giant because then you can just go for dawns and kill the whole lane so earthbound spinner is the fine we get rid of the effect here so he's not getting that bad later for cheap we still have a pierce and javelin if a, a big guard is coming uh, i would expect that he's just crushing the seven five though you must be cleansed or silencing okay silencing is better for us than rushing it so that's still a crush wow that is still a crush you lazy lazy fool let's draw a few more cards shall we yeah we shall drawing another two cards he's down to 11 we get an assassin we got the dragon tail oh question 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 maybe we're just going for the assassin because the dragon tail well that is working with the warthog headhunter so i'm just giving him the assassin the keep the dragon tail so that we can go charge for the face for another five next turn and if we if we get the rally effect which is unlikely then we might even get an improved unit oh he's hitting the giant luckily not the warthog headhunter so we still have charge damage by the eight, they will meet their oh yeah we still have charge damage sir so we crush the hell of death priest Cool is also nice so go for the dragon tail here we drop the mummy on the right lane and I'm very interested in getting the buff on the Warthog Headhunter. So crushing the Hell of Death Priest. Not getting a buff on that, damn it. And then we go for the Headhunter on, let's see, left or right? That is a question. If you go left, you can easier kill it. Uh, we go right. Let's go right. So he's down to six. Manticore right. We still have then four to push here. Plus we have the two from the mummy because we can use a Pierce and Javelin. It's getting closer and closer. So six life only left. There is a Dawn's. He has three to go. Can he kill this as well? There's a last strike. Talking about consistency in 75 card decks. Played all the strikes. Coming always at a good time. So this is coming in handy. Are we using Pierce and Javelin now? No, we are not. We are not. Let's just go for the wind keep. Go for the troll. We use the Pierce and Javelin next. And I'm, I'm highly, highly sure that something is coming that we want to kill. And then we could play Pierce and Javelin and we could play the sharp. See, there's a Manticore, the one that I was afraid of. So Pierce and Javelin is just crushing it. We're still dealing two in the face. And we might even pick a card that is giving us the victory. Blood Dragon is not the card. But on the other hand, it is denying any sort of guard. So we might still just drop that here. And if we can attack with the Blood Dragon, it is a victory. If we cannot attack with the Blood Dragon, then we might just play the Sharp Eye here and we draw a few more cards. There is another Manticore. Hooray! See, and that's how consistent these 75 card decks are. They always have what they want. You might I wonder why that is the case. And a Barrel Stalker, of course. So, what do we need? What do we need? We need a Pierce and Javelin. Yeah, we need a Pierce and Javelin. So let's play that here. Then you get some life back, unfortunately. But we are still killing the Manticore, that's for sure. Still killing the big boy. Then we play the Sharp Eye here. Great card, by the way. So we are drawing our three cards. Counting. We get Morgul. Why do you not give me a... Oh, damn it. I wanted... I really, really wanted... Uh, just to pick up a nice, nice little steal and then just kill the Barrow Stalker. So he's getting life back. Are we now hitting him with that? Or are we waiting? We might wait with the Gatekeeper here, to be honest. 
We will wait. Let's go. I I will keep the ward here alive. But let's see how he's not dropping the execute. The elusive for zero. Hooray! Nice another free card. The cast in the time. Hooray! Wrong place for At least we're just playing that wrong. once right now, so that's okay. Uh, so can we keep that? Can we keep that alive for a bit longer? So how many items have you played? Not a single one, man. If we just drop I everything here, the ice dome is a huge, huge problem. Nagi is also a problem. Damn it! Oh, that might work. That might work, and then he's just giving me. Oh boy! If we drop everything and he's giving us a dance, he already played one. And you know, they always have more, apparently. Uh, so let's go for the gatekeeper on the right we totally buff this we get rid of the the drain here and now the thing is i because there is a possibility of a dance i think we drop one hunting right and we drop the other two units on the left side so we obviously want to attack him with the young because that is would survive a dance as well so then he's trading here oh, no that's fine let's do this so we go here and this on the right just in case, if there is a dance, then we get a buff on one of these units. Hopefully. Might not work at all, but we will try. And if there is a, an ice storm, then this is getting buffed. So he's he's going for the Merchant's Camel. Hoping to find the right card. He has 8 Magicka left. Execute, drop. Pierce and Javelin, drop. So you have something better than an Executor, Pierce and Javelin. What could that be? He could also play Tom Hall Dracen, costing another four, and then just four left. They digged. You do not have another reverberating strike. But you have another dig. Oh yeah, perfect. Perfect. That's also perfect. So we're gonna use that. Hit the haunting. Crush the Nargleaf. He's still sitting there at six life. That's a five-five. Well, you know, consistency in 75 card decks is everything. So what kind of strange destruction will he give me now? There's always a way, and I can always Okay, so you could find Source of Negation. That's probably what you're picking. You can play that instantly. See? I'm a wizard, and I know what he's doing. That's another 4 to attack. Probably, maybe, we will see. At least if he's going for another guard, we might deal some... Oh, come on. All the stupid cards in your hand. At least we get another card. Auckland Captain. So now just give me a Water Cat and I'm fine. We have a few more. We have two more. Just give me a Water Cat and I'm super fine. The Forerunner. Well, that's also... That's two more on the face. Two more is good. And you also played three Mirsen's Camel, right? Already? Yeah. Funny, oh, he's getting all the good cards here. Three Barrow Stalker, three Camel. That's all super helpful against my deck in the situation right now. So he picked another card that he needed. I might just go for this. So the thing is, if he's going for another... He's playing Hello Death Priest. If he's going for another Hello Death Priest, he would hit one of the cards. And I think we just want the damage in here right now. I know Let's go for one now. You have two in the face, so he's down to four. What we kind of need is a Sova of Avenge. We need a Wodo Cat Hunter here. But if we if we go for Sova, that could still be a cast in the time. Oh, look! The last Manticora. How unexpected that is. We'll see about this. And now you have a lot of damage here. And there was a Wodo Cat Hunter. Damn it. Uh, can we survive the turn? That's 4, that is 10, that is 21. Holy shit. Yeah, congratulations, sir. So you have half of the deck left. All Manticores out. All Ancanos out. This is out. All the Barrow Stalkers are out. All the Merchant's Camels. Good stuff. And there is also another card that would have given us a victory. So this we're probably using now. There might be... Most likely there's also Lightning Bolt in hand. The last one. So yeah, there we go. Unfortunately, we lost this one. But not the fault of the deck. More like the fault of if your opponent is running too good so damn it lost that unfortunately but uh, the deck is still working very good 
Bin rate is high, you are crushing most things that you will face right now on the ladder. So if you're looking for a different Redoran deck that is not running too much of the rally things, so kind of like nothing of the rally things, uh, then definitely give this deck a try. And if you like this video, also don't forget to hit the like button, uh, comment below and tell me what the deck you want to see next. So I'm always um, eager to hear your feedback. So don't forget to do that. And with that, I'm out. I wish you a wonderful day and see you then in the next video of The Elder Scrolls Legends. So bye bye, guys.